Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to this pantograph quilting tutorial. This is a pantograph design. It is basically a continuous line design that is printed onto a 12 foot long piece of paper. And it's printed that long, so that way, no matter how long your long arm table is, you can spread it out and be able to quilt any size of quilt. So this is a really cool way of quilting, of covering your quilts with a single design, of not having to think about it so much and focus on the design aspect of it because you're just following the pattern and you're following it with either a laser light or a stylus from the back of your machine. So it's a very different quilting process holding on to a set of rear handlebars at the back of the machine. So for many different reasons, this was a little bit fiddly to get into and to understand how it worked and how the design is continuous and how I uh, basically keep it going through the quilt, how I index the quilt to get to the next row. So dad and I have been playing around with this for the last three weeks and we came up with several different ideas for making this easier to understand, uh, ways that we printed directly onto our pantographs so that way it's gonna be easy for you to use as well. And in this video, I'm just gonna guide you through the basics, how pantograph quilting works, and in future video tutorial, I'm gonna show how you, I get this set up on my tabletop, how I plan it all out, and then I'll do another tutorial on troubleshooting issues because it is easy to make mistakes and have some errors crop up along the way, and I really want you to be successful with pantograph quilting. Now, because this was just a little tricky for me to understand, I decided to not only create pantograph designs, but I also decided to write a special pantograph guidebook. And you can find it at leahday.com slash panto. It's a PDF download, and it's gonna be a photo guide to help you when you're at your machine. You can print it out and have it at your machine, and that's gonna guide you to getting set up, getting started, stitching the design, advancing the quilt, and troubleshooting issues. So come and pick up the guidebook so that way you can get started with pantograph quilting on the right foot. You can find it at leahday.com slash panto. And it's also where you can find all of my new pantograph designs. So let's get started learning how to do this basic form of quilting together. So I'm here on the back of my machine and a few things just to kind of explain what's going on here. I've got my pantograph taped down to the tabletop. This is my laser light and it is pointing straight down at my pantograph design and I am lined up and ready to get started on this single wave design. Now up here, you can see I am on the quilt. The edge of the foot is pretty much right on the edge of my solid fabric that I'm stitching on. And this is good. You always want to double check where your foot is located when you're first beginning a pantograph so that you're not accidentally in the batting area and dragging across the quilt where you could cause it to wrinkle up and really make a mess. So always be double checking, not just the back of the machine, but also the front. Now I stopped and turned off the machine and had a couple days of a break. So I took a little square of fabric and really quickly ran a tension test here. That's what this little square is. This is a really good habit to get into because your machine's off, you take a couple days off of it. Eh, it who's to say that my little kid wouldn't have come in here and played around with my tension, tension dial or something like that. So I always like to just do a little tension test and make sure my stitches are looking just as good on the front as they are on the back. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. I'm just gonna, in this tutorial, I just wanna show you how the pantograph design works and how I follow it. So I'm gonna click on the machine and I'm just quilting with Cruise. That's the style of uh, stitch regulator that I'm using here. And you can see I'm just steering the machine and getting that laser light to follow that wave pattern. And every once in a while, it's a good idea to stop and double check what's going on with the quilt. So I'm gonna come around and stop when I get to that point. This is another thing you kind of have to think about is when is a good point where you can stop and check on things. And it's not gonna be noticeable. You're not gonna have a noticeable wobble in the design. So I'm checking this and everything is looking pretty good. You can see I have a few wobbles and bobbles here and that's normal because we are quilting with a panto with just a laser light guiding. So this is only gonna turn out as good as I can steer the machine to match that. 
So if you get into this and you look at it and you're like, well, that's not perfect looking, understand that that's normal. That's just part of the process of learning is mastering moving the machine smoothly and following that line nicely. And I'm starting completely cold today. So I haven't warmed up. I haven't done very much quilting at all, which means that I'm probably not gonna follow this as perfectly as I would have otherwise. You know, if I had taken some time to just stitch down the sides in that batting area and do a little bit of a warm up, I'd probably be following this a little bit better, but it's not the end of the world. And keep in mind that this is standing out so much because it is basically gray fabric, gray thread on bright blue fabric. So that's why it's standing out so much more than it would have otherwise, especially if it was on a scrappy happy quilt. So I'll stop again. And you can see, yeah, I was a little bit all over the place <laughs> with that one. And you know, it's one of those things I've, I've picked up on already in designing pantographs is that sometimes having these really nicely circular shapes can be, you know, just be a little bit trickier to follow and follow smoothly. But I promise you the more times you stitch it and swing around with that design, the better you're gonna get. So I'm gonna slow down and see if that helps. Now, another thing you have to keep in mind is that as you move the machine down, you also kind of have to shuffle down with it. So I've gotta also be moving my feet. And you can do that, you can just stop with the needle in the down position and move, or you can just try and you know shuffle your body a little bit, slow down, shuffle your body. I had dad try this out a few times and he found having a nice wide stance, standing with his legs wide apart was really helpful for giving this a good test. Okay, we're coming up on the end. And there we go, I've stitched off into the batting area. So I am now stitched across my panto. You can see this is it translated here on the quilt itself. And again, there's wobbles and bobbles here, guys. I was talking and quilting at the same time and also starting totally cold. And some of these are looking great, some of them not so much, but if this was on a scrappy happy quilt, I don't think that would matter one bit. Okay, so a couple things that I like to do before I uh, roll the quilt up and get to the next level of the design, I like to stitch down this edge. This is uh, the edge of the quilt. You can see it's kind of loosey-goosey here. I like to stitch that down just to make sure it's nice and secure. And it's also gonna make binding the quilt easier too. So what I do is just position the machine in the right place. And I'm being really careful not to stitch over my fingers as I just smooth that out and stitch straight down. Now it's also a good habit to get into to look at your pantograph and make sure there's no parts of the design that you may have missed down here on the end. Like if you had a wobbly design that kind of had a little tail that came in, you might have to go on ahead and stitch that. But I know right now, if I stitch up, I'm looking at where the laser light is lining up on this design and I'm not, I don't have anything that I'm supposed to stitch through that area. So there we go, I stitched down, came back up, that just reinforced that edge. And now my needle is pretty much exactly where it was before, where that design ended. So now let's talk about indexing the design. This is what it means to roll the quilt up and get to the next level. And one thing you might be wondering about is why I'm not quilting a bigger pantograph. I mean, clearly I have all this space. Why don't I put a bigger design on this frame? And I do have more space. You can see back here, I have actually marked and indicated, I'm gonna share in a different tutorial, how to do this, how to set up these tape lines to know exactly how big of a pantograph design you can fit uh, on your machine. But here's the thing I've learned. You don't really wanna push it because as your quilt rolls up here on this back bar, that's gonna limit how much space you have to quilt in. So you really don't wanna push it to the absolute limits of your frame because as you roll up your quilt, it may not end up fitting. So that's something to keep in mind and watch out for. Okay, so on the pantograph designs, that I print for leahday.com, we have added some special lines to really help you with indexing the design. So here is the single wave design and I'm about right here in the design. And most pantograph designs don't have any extra lines printed, they just have your main design line. But I decided to add 
some very simple guidelines to help you with indexing the design, to help you add the next row and make sure that it's evenly spaced. So you'll see on all of the pantos that are printed from leahday.com, you'll see these gray dashed lines to the top and bottom of the pantograph design. So I'm right here. What I wanna do is stitch up to this uppermost gray dashed line. And that's what I'm gonna do next. So let's hop back on the machine and I'm just gonna do that. Click on the machine and just stitch straight up until the laser light is lined up with that uppermost gray dashed line. Now it's time to advance the quilt through the machine. So I have attached my clamps here to the sides and I'm just using a strip of fabric. This is one of those nice clamps that can, you can attach to the sides of the quilt, but honestly I find they usually hang up against the edge of my machine. So instead I've attached this little strip of fabric and then just pinned it to the side and that works great. So I just unpin that so it's unhooked and unpin this side too. Just make sure those pins don't end up under the machine. Now I'm gonna take off my quilt clips and unlock the machine. And I'm just using this front rail and the back rail. So now the, the frame is completely unlocked and I can roll it. So I'm gonna roll it and as I'm rolling it, I'm looking at my laser light. So I'm watching it roll back down that design. Now, my needle is in the down position. It's locked into place on the quilt where I wanted it to go, on that uppermost dashed line. That's important because now that's gonna determine where I line this up on this side of the quilt. So basically I wanna get it to where the laser light is resting pretty much in the middle of the two bottom dashed lines. So here we go. I was basically right here. I stitched up to the uppermost gray dash line. I made sure that my needle was in the down position. Then I rolled the quilt so that the laser light dragged all the way back and stopped right in the middle of those two lines. Because now at this point, when I tighten up the quilt, that laser light's gonna move and it's gonna be lined up on that second gray dash line, the one that's running right along the bottom edge of the panto. And what this is doing, by moving the machine up to this point and then rolling it down to this point, we're on the right track to evenly space these waves. So let's get this in the right location. Right now I'm about a quarter inch off. I do that on purpose because as you tighten up the quilt, as you fluff everything out and get this lock back up in place, you can see that moves the laser light ever so slightly, it moves the machine, it moves everything. So that bounces it forward just a bit. So there we go, smooth that back out nicely. Put my quilt clips back on. And then also pin my little straps on the sides. And I just found that the straps on the sides, I don't usually use those, but I found because I'm quilting from the back of the quilt, and I can't see the front of the quilt as easily. I can't control it. You know, my tendency, my habit is to be smoothing and spreading. You know, when I'm quilting, I'm usually uh, smoothing and spreading things out from the front. Well, I don't have that ability when I'm quilting a pantograph from the back. So by using these straps and pinning this and adding a little tension to the sides, I just find that that helps to smooth things out. Before I was getting a few ripples, side to side ripples across the quilt that way. And I found that that was probably the reason why I needed to use these straps. So now I'm back in position. My laser light is lined up with the correct line on the pantograph. So here we go. This is exactly what it looks like uh, at the back of the machine. And I am lined up right now with that second gray dash line. It's basically the line that's running right along the bottom edge of my design. So you can always double check yourself to make sure that dashed line is rubbing up against the design line that we're gonna follow. Okay, so now what do I do? I'm gonna click on the machine and again, I wanna make sure that I smooth out this edge so that my foot doesn't accidentally get hung up on it. 
so I'm just going to stitch straight up. If ever I'm worried that it's going a little wobbly bobbly, you can just smooth it out. Being careful, of course, because I'm from the back of the machine, when your hand's up here, <laughs> it's kind of a, one of those things that you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble. So watch out for that needle. Make sure you're not going to stitch yourself. Okay, that looks good. Now I am lined up so my laser light is on the design line. It is on that single wave. And now all I have to do, click on the machine and begin quilting. I'm going to try and do this nice and smooth. I'm going to go at a medium pace. I'm trying to breathe. When you hold your breath, it's really easy to get choppy. Because of course you gotta kind of flow with the design. Moving the machine, moving the long arm, it's a physical thing. You can't hold your breath the entire time. I'm gonna shuffle my feet, slide on down. Now it's a good idea just to kind of eyeball the quilt. Maybe stop with the first, I probably should have stopped with this first spiral, but I didn't think about it till now. So whenever I think about it, I just stop and check in, make sure nothing weird is going on with the quilt. And then I get going again. I have found that usually if I take my time spreading and smoothing things out when I advance the quilt and I clamp it in place nicely, and then I'd use those straps, I have found that I haven't really had to do a lot of fiddling with the quilt. When I wasn't messing with the straps, I found that the quilt top oftentimes would kind of pull to one side or the other. So I learned to be really careful about that. And it's really, it's just the difference of, of stitching from the back of the machine versus the front of the machine. And it's one of those things that you just have to keep in mind. I'm shuffle my feet again. I'd say that's the hardest thing is being able to move with the design and not have that make a wobble. But it's not so bad. And I'm already playing around with designs that, you know, really it won't matter if you stitch off the line a little bit. It won't matter if it's not 100% perfect. And particularly on a busier quilt, it's not going to matter one bit. I'm spinning around, coming to that point, swirling around again. You will find a certain speed that really works for you. I found that when I let the guys do pantograph quilting, I asked them to come and hang out with me and give it a try. They went super, super slow. They were like this, just like barely touching the machine. And it didn't necessarily translate to 100% perfect stitching. Now, one thing to keep in mind is not to really get a death grip on these handlebars. Keep in mind, it's a really light touch. You don't have to be really aggressive with it. Now, any time that you're quilting, and let's say you might stop, get a cup of coffee, something like that, always double check what you've quilted and what direction you need to go into next. So trace your finger around that design, figure out what you've stitched, so that way you don't accidentally stitch in the wrong direction. I did that once, here's a picture of what it looked like. I took off stitching in the wrong direction and then had to backtrack again to get back in the right direction. And I probably should have ripped that out, but I didn't because I really wanted to show you what it would look like if you make that mistake. So make sure that you're working in the right direction. And it, I think it's the best, honestly, to stitch all the way through, finish the row completely before you stop and go do something else. So that way you know when you're leaving your design, you're leaving your quilt, that you can come back to it and know exactly where you're getting back on track. Okay, so there we go. I'm back in the batting area. And again, this is just a little extra detail that I like. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna stitch straight back, right along that edge of the quilt, just to secure it down. I like that because it just makes it easier to bind. You know, I get the quilt off the machine and it's just that much easier to put the binding on and get it done. Now I'm back where that laser light's lined up here with the design line. Now again, the rule is stitch up to the topmost gray dashed line. Here we go. Stitch straight up and stop. So what this has done by stitching up to that point, I'm basically getting the machine and the quilt 
on to the next row. And you can see this beautiful spacing that we have going on here between these spirals. That's adding that half of an inch of space between the spirals. Then when I drag the machine down, when I roll up the quilt and advance the quilt and bring it down here and tighten it up to this line, well, then I'm back on my design line. I'm in the right place. I've already done the spacing to get to the next row. So that's why we do it that way. That's how we advance the quilt through the machine. And now it's just going to be a wash and repeat. I'm gonna undo these straps, take off my quilt clips, advance the quilt through the machine and stitch again. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do pantograph quilting with me and you're excited about giving this a try. You can find all of the pantographs I've designed so far and the free pantograph quilting guidebook at leahday.com slash panto. And as far as the best designs that I think will work really great for beginners, uh, curvy chevron is a great design because those curves if you stitch off of them and wiggle around a bit, it's not gonna be a super big deal because of course it's all curves and that's gonna all blend together really nicely. Another one that's great for beginners is loopy line. You can stitch those loopy lines and be a little wild and crazy with some of them and it's not gonna matter. You're still gonna end up with a beautiful effect. And this daisy flow. I think this will be a super cute quilt for girls. It's got that nice bubbly texture. And again, if you quilt off the line or you're a little wobbly bobbly, it's not going to matter with a design like this. So come and check out all of these pantograph designs and get your free pantograph quilting guidebook at leahday.com slash panto. Until next time, let's go quilt.